Oh, thank you. Thank you, Carlo. Uh, just a couple of words which complement the historical view from, uh, uh, from Gigi, um, from the point of view of the, of the observatory. Uh, uh, basically, um, this is uh, the, the, the outline of the talk, but uh, um, an important thing to point out is that the, um, uh, the, the part that concerns data processing is at least as important as uh, the instrument uh, to, get, to achieve the scientific results of a, of a, of a space mission. Because, of course, uh, if you don't have a good instruments, you don't have good data, and you have nothing to process. But you have to be very accurate in an experiment like Planck or in the future Euclid to actually be able to, uh, to produce good scientific results. And the accuracy depends on the capability of doing good data processing and have good, good techniques and have good people dedicated to that sort of activity. Um, we are here, of course, to discuss the scientific results of the mission, but as my, uh, my, my historical uh, view graph, one starts from somewhere. Uh, from the point of view of a space mission, this is probably uh, the original idea of, of, the, uh, of, the, of the COBRAS instrument, which was actually drawn by, by um, uh, Marco Bersanelli and sent to Reno Mandolesi in discussion with, uh, with Gigi and Gianfranco. So to get from the top left to the bottom line, there is an intermediate step, the terrible day that, that Gigi mentioned, and this was the public event for the, uh, for the Planck launch at, at, the, uh, the, uh, at the observatory. And, uh, well, uh, you see it's, it has been a very exciting day. Uh, since that was May um, 2009, we know that we have an, have an operations phase, what we call the operations phase of four years. The drawing was actually 1992 as a response to the, uh, uh, to the, the first call for ideas of, uh, of ESA. Uh, and the implementation phase has lasted 17 years. This is why Gigi called terrible that day. And this is why the, the people with gray hair in the, in the picture there, uh, well, Gigi doesn't, doesn't dare to look. And I'm cheering as if I was at the races saying, go, 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 go. No, so <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's really a terrible day. Uh, very exciting, but very, very <laughs> hard in terms of, of heart, <laughs> heart attacks. OK, a quick timeline uh, for, the, for the mission. It took four years to actually get from the uh, 63, if I'm not wrong, uh, ideas uh, proposed uh, in 1992 to actually have a, approved a joint mission merging the Cobras and Samba into, the, into two instruments of the same uh, spacecraft. And uh, it was uh, accepted, the, the Italian leadership for the low frequency part was, was accepted and the, there was this decision, decision to propose Trieste as the data processing site. There was a legacy since uh, in, the, in the observatory there was experience already with three space missions uh, and pretty important ones, uh, the, the IUE, uh, the International Ultraviolet Explorer, where there were, was a lot of experience in the data processing. The uh, Hubble Space Telescope, where part of the uh, uh, observatory staff had a role in the definition and in the operations of the archive. And in the Spectrum V, which was actually a mission which wasn't launched, it was a, um, an Italy-Russia um, mission, but we had the experience of planning the whole science uh, ground segment, Science Operations Center. So uh, once the, uh, the consortia were accepted, that happened in 1998, we started Phase B, and it took some time to actually prepare instruments, delivering them for an in integration uh, between them and with the satellite. And then the, uh, the satellite was delivered to ESA in 2008. And there was an official delivery, in quotes, of the data processing center in Trieste in July 2008. Then we underwent what are called the operational uh, verification tests. Uh, and then finally, the, uh, the launch and the start of operations. 
So what, which were the challenges for, uh, for building a data processing center in Trieste? Well, first of all, uh, the data processing centers are two, one in Trieste for the low frequency instrument and one in Paris for the high frequency instrument. It's also true that in any case, both of them combine results from, from, the, other, from the other center. So it's a, it's a twin sort of approach. And having two consorts and two centers uh, implies managing complex interfaces, uh, to say the least. Uh, then, of course, uh, as Gigi mentioned, uh, the, uh, the knowledge for, uh, for a CMB in, in Europe in general was very distributed, and in Italy it was very, uh, even more distributed. So we needed, we needed lots of coordination uh, to, to have a centralized data processing center in Trieste, uh, gathering knowledge from many different places, from a geographical distribution of, of knowledge. Uh, the third point was that complex, the, the processing is complex, so we need to, for diversified computing resources, be, being able to, to do fast real-time work and also very powerful to, uh, to make complex calculations and, and uh, um, time-consuming calculations. All of this in uh, a very limited budget scenario. And I won't go into any other details <laughs> on this. So, uh, first of all, we have to understand what, uh, how, how it works, basically. So, we have uh, a spacecraft uh, 1,500,000 kilometers away from, from the Earth, sending three hours a day during the daily telecommunications uh, period, three hours a day, data on ground to a ground station located in New Norcia, uh, Australia. Data are buffered there, and some of them go real time to a missions operation center staying in, uh, in Darmstadt, Germany, and uh, where the, the health of the spacecraft and the instruments is checked. And then the data are sent in time uh, during the day uh, to the two data processing centers which are in charge of building the maps and making the scientific analysis of the data. Well, uh, this is a very uh, simplified, of course, schema, uh, a, m a simplified schema, but uh, um, a little bit more, more detailed is the following, where uh, one can easily understand that the processing of, the, uh, of, of Planck data are actually uh, distributed in three different steps, one which has to go to deal with the, with the data as they come from the spacecraft, one which has to deal with, with actually the, uh, the calibration of the data, the removal of the instrument signatures, uh, and so on and so forth. You get all, the, all those details from, uh, from Andrea later. And one on the uh, actual uh, interfrequency checks, the combination of the data from the various channels, uh, frequency channels of the various instruments to build the scientific results of the mission. All of this need to be during the, the many years of development need to be simulated so that simulated data, mock, uh, mock, mocks actually, mock data, are actually in, ingested in, the, uh, in this sort of pipeline to actually test if this thing works as, as appropriate. Uh, this is cloned, uh, duplicated on the other, on the right hand side where uh, the, uh, the other instrument does exactly the same thing. Uh, so data are exchanged, and so all of these arrows going in and out of the various box are actually interfaces, data interfaces, they need to be coordinated. Very complex thing to, 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 to do. Uh, plus, of course, uh, all of the delivery of all of these uh, data to, um, uh, to, to ESA, ESA for, uh, for publishing, for delivery. Data processing challenges are, are many. Uh, there are many difficulties, uh, real-time stuff, complex, uh, uh, time-consuming, and, and, and massive data, made data um, processing, plus a sociological challenge. Uh, coordinating science is, is like herding cats. This is not mine. This is Francois Boucher <laughs> quote. 
but it's definitely like that. It's, it's very difficult to have people having strong ideas working together. So the idea of integrating into a single system in Trieste of different uh, software mechanisms, uh, knowledge, uh, developed in a very distributed environment which uh, involved Italy mostly, Trieste itself of course, but also Milan, Padova, Bologna, Rome, uh, plus Switzerland, um, Spain, Finland, the UK, the, the Americans. Well, this has been very successful because this is, is actually uh, putting together a whole bunch of knowledge and, and having it working coherently. Also, the different requirements that I was mentioning about the, the various different data processing levels, uh, going from telemetry handle to the uh, map production or the, the separation of the astrophysical components or the estimations of the uh, power spectrum of the, uh, of, the, of the CMB, involve very different types of, of hardware. And this is what we actually put into, into function. At the, at the observatory, which was more on the operational side, we actually had a number of serial computers, uh, redundant, capable of um, actually uh, supporting uh, the, 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 the quasi-real-time operations with, uh, with security and uh, with, with safety. And um, so a whole set of, of real-time, so, so to speak, systems and a, a, a mini-parallel system, uh, redundant, uh, to do processing, calibration, and map-making. Uh, this system, which was called ENT, was replaced by a green system in, in early 2012. It, uh, the ENT was ready in 2008. Uh, but it uh, consumed lots of power, so it was replaced by a green system lately with much less money. And in CISA, there was a parallel supercomputer for the scientific interpretation. And I think it's fair also to remind that uh, the Trieste um, um, research system has a, a metropolitan area network uh, based on, uh, on the dark fibers, which actually allowed uh, CISA and the observatory to exchange data at one gigabit per second, which is a pretty pretty fast uh, way of, of, of sharing data, almost as if we were in, in the same in the same building. So just this this is just the system that we had uh, at the at the observatory, um, and this is actually the picture of what we had in house. Um, so finally, uh, just to make it short. Uh, the, the issues and the lesson, lessons that we learned. Well, first of all, the funding problems that, that we mentioned. Uh, cost to completion is actually uh, uh, three words that uh, imply uh, a terrible uh, spada di damocle <laughs> is something that <laughs> I can't, I'm unable to translate, something, a sword on your head, basically. Uh, because uh, it's fixed money to achieve a result. But if for, for any case uh, the, the launch of a spacecraft, for example, is delayed, and the launch of Planck was delayed by two years, you have the same amount of money to keep the people working for you. And since the cost of completion had no um, extras, no um, allowance for, uh, for, uh, for contingencies, that was a real, real, real problem. So uh, since also uh, the, the instrument costed more than expected, of course, data processing and the, and the data processing center was at the end of the path. And uh, we suffered really for limited resources and especially understaffing. So uh, we solved these problems with, uh, with some help and some miracle, and I have to thank here the supercomputing center in Italy, Cineco, who allowed us to have, uh, to, to borrow <laughs> uh, a very powerful, what was a very powerful computing at the uh, computer system at the time to, to do our work, and thanks to a good idea that we had, <laughs> and especially lots of dedication in the, in the people working at the, at the center. We also were pretty good at, uh, at uh, finding technical solutions that were able to minimize costs. 
and we did a very careful planning. Uh, just to give an example, we estimated with 10 years of 10 years in advance that uh, 70 man years were person years were were needed to uh, to develop the center in Trieste, and we actually employed 68 10 years in advance. That's that's pretty good planning, I would say. And especially, we are subject to a very accurate reviewing, which was very troublesome, very annoying. But after all, that allowed us to, to know that we are, were time by time on the right track. One very important point, especially for young people, is that it's difficult to guarantee continuity. In a long period project, we have the problem of transfer of knowledge. Uh, the recognition of, uh, of, of young people that are that, that are growing and, and have their their career ambitions obviously, obviously. and this is a, a, a continuity um, problem actually and uh, to overcome these difficulties it's important to build a very strong team spirit and this is what happened in in Trieste and also with all on the whole of the Italian group and certainly we need to thank all the, all the people there uh, that allowed the, all of this to, to, to become possible. And this includes, of course, also uh, people that also Gigi mentioned, including our administrative uh, people who actually became absolutely crazy in getting all of the, uh, uh, making, um, um, how they say, um, marriage uh, parties with dry figs. Not Sekufiki Seki, Italians know <laughs> pretty well what this means. Thank you, especially to them all.